Today, I'm going to show you how to design a time picker in Figma according with Google's material design guidelines. Time pickers and time inputs are used to enter a time value that can be used for anything from setting an alarm to scheduling a meeting. On mobile, they're displayed in ducks and can be used to select hours, minutes, or a period of time. A mobile time picker has five distinct parts of its anatomy. It has the title, an interactive display where you can set the time value for both hours and minutes, the actual clock dial where you can select the hour, an icon button where you can switch to just time input via keyboard, and an AM PM selector. There's also buttons at the bottom right where you can confirm the time or you can cancel this picker. Separately from the time picker, there's also something called the time input. That screen looks like this, which is all the same components except the clock dial has gone away and you can see that the hour window changes from that fixed value to something that you type in with your keyboard. To start, let's create the time picker. I am going to create a rectangle that is 328 pixels wide and 500 pixels high. I am going to change this value to white and I'm going to change the corner radius to four pixels and add a card shadow here. I will call this picker and then I am going to go to my assets panel and I'm going to go to buttons and select this tertiary button. You'll notice that I've got components and styles here. If you don't have those, you can go to the link in the description, which has the Figma file in the community, which you can download for free and follow along. If we go to tertiary, I'm going to bring this to the bottom right, but I'm going to get eight pixels of padding on both the right and bottom side. We'll change this to say OK, and then we'll create a second button which says Cancel, and then I will change this to Hug Contents so that the full button is shown. Let's set the width of this to 72 pixels, and we'll set the width of this to 64. Let's make sure that there is 8 pixels of spacing between these two elements. So if I select both of these and I change this to 8, that will do the trick. And then I need to make sure that this is 8 pixels from the right. So I've got this set up like that. The next thing I'm going to do is create that keyboard button, which is actually a little bit larger. I'm going to change this to be 40 by 40, which I'll select here. And I'll make sure that auto layout is centered. And I'm going to type keyboard and then I'm going to change this to font awesome. I'm going to go from brands to pro and then I'm going to change from primary to the 600 gray and then I will again make sure that I've got eight pixels sitting on both the left and bottom here. So now I've got this bottom part. Next I'm going to add my title. I will type the words select time in all uppercase. Let's change this to be that gray 600 value and we're going to change this to be 12 pixels and then I'm going to make this minus one. Then I'm actually going to have this aligned to the bottom like so. And I'm going to change this to be 28 pixels high. And I'll make sure that it is 24 pixels from the left. We'll stretch it out to be 24 pixels from the right. So 280 pixels wide. And then I will have this aligned with the top like so. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is reduce the line height so that this fits close to the bottom. Essentially what I'm trying to do here is have this distance be 28 pixels. So it's actually 26 pixels right now. I'm going to do two more pixels facing here and then do that. And it'll be 28 pixels from the bottom, which is Google material design specifications. Next, I am going to create the time inputs. So let's make a rectangle here. We're going to change this fill color to be our light primary. And then let's add a four pixel border radius here. I'm gonna change the width of this to be 96 by 80. Then I'm going to duplicate this, but I'm gonna change this to be a light gray like so. And then I'm going to make sure that these have 24 pixels of spacing between them and make sure that they have 52 pixels of spacing from the top. I'll also make sure that this is 24 pixels from the left like so. Next, I'm going to create the text values that go in both of these boxes. So let's just say seven. I'm going to make this much larger, 56 pixels in size, 64 pixel line height, and minus 2%. It's also regular, so it's a little bit lighter. And then I will make sure that this is centered within this box. I'm actually gonna increase the width a little bit just in case it is a larger number, like to say that this fits. Let's give it eight pixels of padding on each side. So you'll end up with a box that's 80 pixels wide. Next, I'm gonna duplicate this, bring it over here, and then I'm going to change this to be a black color. And then I'm actually going to go to this background piece and see if I change it to gray zero to zero. Got a little bit lighter, got a little bit lighter background here, which feels good. Next, I'm going to create a colon here as the time differentiator. I'm going to set this to be 24 pixels wide. I'm going to set the height to be 56 pixels, just because that feels a little bit more visually centered. And then make sure that that fits evenly between those two things. 
Next, I need to create my AM and PM indicators. I am going to go down here and make sure that this is 24 pixels from the side, like so, and then make sure that this is 12 pixels from the side. Let's change this to say AM, and then let's make sure that it hugs the contents. And then I'm also gonna stack this on top and then below, let's have this say PM. And then I am going to take both of these and we'll extend them a little bit and then we'll make sure that they're center aligned. And then I'm going to put a frame around both of those, clip the content and then change the border radius to four pixels. I am going to add a light stroke around both of these. And then I'm gonna take this top one and I'm going to add a stroke on the bottom. I'm gonna have this be the same color. So we'll change this stroke to be that like, and then let's reduce the rounding here so that that is a straight line. We'll have the AM state be active, which means that we need to change this to a light primary background. And then we need to take this fill color here and change it to that 600. Grid. The last piece I need to make is my time picker, which is supposed to be 256 pixels in size. So I'm gonna make a rectangle that is 256 pixels. And then I'm going to have this be 36 pixels from the top and that will be 76 pixels from the bottom. The position of this will be 168 pixels from the top and 76 pixels from the bottom. I'm going to add 200 pixels of border radius that's so perfectly round. We will again make this that light gray and then I'm going to add another ellipse and I'm going to take this, hit, hit K and then change the size to 6 and change the size to 8. And then I'm going to change this to that primary purple. The next thing I'm going to do is take another one of these button components here. Then I'm going to change this to be 12 o'clock. Let's have this be regular. And we'll have this color be a bit darker. We'll have this be 40 pixels by 40 pixels. And then we'll have this be four pixels from the top of the circle. I will move this down here and do the same thing. And then I will center this horizontally and then also have that do the same thing. And then move this over here. And this will be three, this will be six, and this will be nine. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm gonna make sure that it is 18 pixels from the top and 56 pixels from the left. And I will do the opposite over here. 1856 and then over here we will do 56 pixels on top and 18 pixels from the side and then again over here just make sure that that's 18 and then we'll change this to 11 10 and then one two and i'll duplicate both of these bring them down here make sure that they are 18 pixels from the bottom and i'll duplicate these and then i'll make sure that these are 56 pixels like so then I'll change these numbers to four, five, and eight. And then I am going to have seven be active. So I'm gonna change the color of this to white, and then I'm gonna make the fill that primary, and then I'm gonna make the rounding 100 pixels so that it's perfectly round. And then I am going to zoom in a bit here, and I'm gonna hit P, and then I'm gonna to go to the center of this circle. And what looks to be center of the circle. I need to make sure that's right. So now you can see that it is 20 pixels from the bottom and the left, which means that it's centered. Then I'm going to move this back a bit so that it doesn't overlap with that seven like so. And then let's change the stroke to be that primary purple. And then we'll make this two pixels wide. So it's a little thicker. And that is the time picker. So this is what you're going to use again when you're selecting a time by dragging around rather than manually entering it with your keyboard. One other thing that I'm going to do is I am going to take all of these pieces and I'm going to have them align with the top like so, and I'm gonna have all these pieces align with the bottom. And then when I duplicate this, I'm going to change this to input. And then I am going to just delete the clock like so. And then I'm going to shrink this down a lot to the point where this has 172 pixels of spacing. So the whole element will be 320 pixels by 220 pixels. Now that I've got that, I'm gonna change that to be outlined and I'm gonna change this to be that primary. Let's have that be two pixels as well. And let's take this and we'll have it be that enter number. The last thing that I need to do here, now that I've outlined this and shown that it's the text that you're gonna be inputting, I am going to change this to be a clock instead. And so if you have this component, when you click on this button, it would change to this enter with keyboard. And if I had this component and I tapped here, it would change to click and drag around to select the time. I'm going to make a landscape version of this. So the only other thing to consider is if you're working with a tablet device and you have a bit more real estate, you're going to lay this out differently. So first, let's make sure that this is aligned with the bottom left and that these two buttons are aligned with the bottom right. 
I'm going to change the width of this to be 584 by 360. And then I'm going to take the entire clock segment and I'm going to move this over to the right. It should be 36 pixels from the top and 24 pixels from the right. For the select time elements, it should be 24 pixels from the left still, but 108 pixels from the top. And then this AM PM piece, rather than being stacked on top of each other, should be horizontally stacked. So let's take this and put it next to this piece and we're gonna change the spacing to be zero. And then let's align that PM with the top. And then I am going to stretch these out and make sure that they fill this container. And then I am going to take this AM and change the stroke from bottom to right. And I'm gonna make sure that the height of this is 40 like so. And I'll make sure that it has 12 pixels of spacing from these time blocks here. One other thing I forgot to do is I'm going to take this select time value, change this to 11 and change the height to 20. And then I'm going to make sure that this is flush with the hour and minutes values. And I'm going to move this over here, duplicate it. And then let's have this say hours and this will say minutes. And then the last thing I'm going to do is change this to medium. And then I'm going to track this in a little bit. So now I've created my time picker, my time input, and then the landscape mode of the time picker. So the way to use all these with each other is that I am going to create a component. I'm going to call this time picker, and I'm going to change this to type, and then I will call this picker. This will be input, and then let's just call this landscape. These time picker components are to be used for Android. Note that when working with iOS, they have their own documentation on their human interface guidelines that talk about the way that they use both date and calendar pickers. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of material design, time pickers, how and when to use them, and how to create your own next time you're working on a project in Figma. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.